We are going to continue the chapter, the Delhi Sultan. This is our third chapter of seventh class history. We are going to do part three. We have done with the two videos, part one and part part two, in our previous video. Today, the topic is what Minhaz's Siraj. thought about razia the topic is what minhaz e siraj thought about razia but before before discussing this topic we will discuss our last video in the last video what did we understand we understood that the author of tariq and tawariks advised the rulers to to maintain a ideal social order or we can say ideal social system what was that ideal social system the ideal social system is the division on the basis of gender distinction and birth right it means they advised the rulers to make division means uh, male should be considered more superior to women at that time male was considered more superior to women so razia was a female female queen female sultan so in this topic we are going to understand when razia became the ruler when razia became the queen what was the thought of minhaz e siraj of that of about her at that time are you getting my point what we are going to understand what uh, in this chapter we have discussed that at that time male was preferred uh, than the rather than the women so when razia a female female became a ruler then what was the thought of of that people or what uh, what was the thought of minhaz e siraj i am definitely sure the two questions will be come in your mind who was razia and who was minhaz e siraj firstly we will discuss who was razia in the early turkish early turkish dynasty there were i want to show you show you book in the early turkish dynasty there were kutubuddin ebak first kutubuddin ebak ruled over there after that shamsuddin itutmish iltutmish after that razia razia was the daughter of iltu sultan iltutmish and she became the daughter in 1236 okay so what we can write we can write razia was the daughter of Sultan Iltutmish and she became the sultan in 1236 okay now who was Minhaz e Siraj Minhaz e Siraj Minhaz e Siraj was the principal chronicler principal chronicler at that time okay or we can say he was the principal chronicler of Mamluk dynasty see principal chronicler what does it mean chronicler means historian okay principal why we are saying minhaz e siraj principal chronicler because he was a very learned and experienced person when history has been writing at that time 
he was considered the principal of all the chroniclers of the historians he was very learned and experienced person that's why okay now when razia became the sultan in 1236 then what was his thought what was the thought of minhaj e siraj about razia minhaj e siraj minhaj e siraj thought that recognized the razia more able and qualified than her four brothers but still he was not comfortable having a queen as a ruler see we will start we will read this line again minhaj e siraj recognized that recognized that razia was razia was more able and qualified than her four brothers razia razia has four brothers but minhaj e siraj recognized that she was more able she was more qualified than her brothers but still he was not comfortable he means minhaj e siraj was not comfortable having a queen or having a woman as a ruler but Uh, she was she was he was accepting that she is more quali- qualified and wise she was more qualified and more able but still he d- uh, he was not accepting her as a ruler why he was not accept- accepting her because she was a female she was a woman okay now see <coughs> why he was not accepting her as a ruler because he thinks that queen went against the order of ideal social system which is created by god c minhaj e siraj did not accept her as a ruler why he did not accept because he thinks that queen went against the order of ideal social against the order of ideal social system which is created by god means he assumed that god has created ideal social order on the basis of gender distinction and the birth right means god give the preference to god has make god has created a creation at a column a register in which only man can be preferred not women so he thinks that queen means female went against the this order order social system which is created by god so he thinks that uh, razia sultan cannot be accepted and he writes in his book he writes in the register of god god's creation
Razia did not fall under the column of man then how can she have such such an excellent qualities see he writes in his book in the registers of god's creation means god has created a register of his creation and in that register razia did not fall under the men's men but still he amazed he is he assumed that how can she has have such an excellent qualities means he is praising his quality her quality but still he is not accepting her as a queen why because he thinks that god has created a ideal social order on the basis of gender distinction as well as birth right so razia did not come under fall under uh, the column of man so she cannot be a sultan means at that time that time was male dominating society at that time people do uh, do not did not accept the female as their sultan but still there were many female rulers this was the th uh, thinking of minhaj e siraj but still there was also uh, female rulers means razia was not only a female ruler female sultan there was all uh, another female rulers also who were they let's see first one was i am writing story of rudrama devi see story of rudrama devi she was also female ruler and she became the ruler in 1262 to 1289 okay see she was the ruler of kaktya dynasty of varangal okay kaktya dynasty of varangal this was the part of modern andhra pradesh this was a part of modern andhra pradesh okay so she what was the what was her quality why she is she was very famous because she pretends she pretends her as a male male sultan okay she pretend as a she pretends her as a male sultan a male ruler means she has changed her name in the creation in the inscription also okay she pretends her as a pretended her as a male ruler okay second thing she changed her name on her inscription okay next example this was a example of rudrama devi next example is story of dida story of dida she ruled over she became the ruler in 982 1003 okay she ruled over kashmir she ruled over kashmir Dida was the name derived from the word didi 
which means elder sister came from the word didi or we can say elder sister she was given this name by her public because she loves her public she supported her public always so her public give this name in affection okay with affection she get this name so these were also female rulers who ruled over there razia was not only the female ruler okay now the next topic is garrison town to big empire see from garrison town to big empire whenever you uh, you write a title then we should always understand the title first okay what the title is saying from garrison town to big empire so firstly we will have to understand the title we have to understood the word garrison town so what is mean by garrison town garrison town an area which is highly fortified and used to soldier used to live there i am writing here then i'll clear okay an area which is highly fortified and soldiers used to live there okay so what does it mean garrison town is an area which is highly fortified what is mean by fortified fortification means kile bandi karna okay sometimes they um, uh, delhi sultans make a wall around the uh, around the town around the troop so and soldiers used to live there their soldier their military base also uh, always live there okay uh, i can uh, clear this statements with an example uh, suppose delhi is here and uh, the delhi sultan fortified this area by making a big wall then this is this is a fortification of that area okay so see garrison is an collective term garrison is a collective term of any body of troops stationed in a particular location when a collective troop troop means sena collective troop lived stationed niyukt karna rehna okay stationed in a particular location that is called garrison town it is a military base a town uh, based on military base is called garrison town so i think i hope you understood the term garrison town now what is mean by this title from garrison town to big empire garrison town means a fortification of a particular location okay but it's saying delhi sultanat was not restricted to the garrison town it expanded the uh, the big empire okay its expansion was very big okay so see initially i am writing here initially there were or we can say the control initially the control of delhi sultan was mainly restricted and 
नो मेजर कंट्रोल टू द हिंटरलैंड सी वट आर दे इनिशियली द कंट्रोल ऑफ दिल्ली सुल्तान वर मेनली रिस्ट्रिक्टेड मीन्स दे हैव फोर्टिफाइड द एरिया देन देर रिस्ट्रिक्शन विज देयर कंट्रोल वॉज ओनली ओनली एट दिस प्लेस they don't have any control out of this okay so initially the control of delhi sultan was mainly restricted to and no major control to the hinterland so here is a new word hinterland what is mean by hinterland here the land i'm writing adjacent to city or part which supply it goods and services okay the land adjacent to hinterland is the land adjacent to city or part which supplied goods and services for example uh, if delhi is here then the uh, area which is uh, which is live near the delhi that is their adjacent sites so near by the area adjacent means near by the area the land adjacent to the city or part which supply it goods uh, which supply the goods and services to the delhi that is their adjacent area that is hinterland now see the statement again initially the control of delhi sultan was limited limited to what limited to only delhi so De uh, limited to only delhi but there were no major control to hinterland they don't have any other control to nearby cities they don't have any control of other parts so it its control was very limited uh, delhi sultan see if the control was limited then the delhi sultanas have to depend the goods and serve for that goods and services to the uh, hinterland see the delhi sultanat dependent upon the upon on trade tribute or plunder see when there was no control of hinterland thus delhi sultanate have to depend on the other cities for goods and supplies then delhi sultanate was dependent at that time for trade vyapar karna tribute tribute means uh, how they can goods and services sometimes the ruler of another uh, another tribes uh, are very happy with their work so they tribute they gives uh, goods and services to the delhi sultan plunder means loot part karna sometimes they fight for the goods and services uh, and then they supply so in this way delhi sultanas were surviving but uh, in this way they were facing many problems because they have to depend to, uh, for goods and services to the another uh, cities another uh, another adjacent tribes okay so uh, they were so uh, then delhi sultanate when delhi sultanate were facing problem the delhi sultanate thinks to expand their empire but when they thinks to exp expand their empire they because they thinking like this they facing some problems in the expansion okay what was their problems uh, see i am writing a line here after that we'll understand that line see controlling garrison town from garrison town of bangal and sin
was very difficult was very difficult from the delhi garrison town c controlling garrison town of bangal and sindh was very difficult from the delhi garrison town means it does it uh, the delhi sultanates did not have only one garrison town in delhi they have uh, in garrison town in bangal they have garrison town in sindh uh, because they were living in garris uh, in the delhi garrison town so it was very difficult for them to maintain the garrison towns of bangal and sindh from the delhi because they have sometimes they have to move from the other cities or other tribes to reach there sometimes they face many problems so what were the uh, problems they were facing first one was rebellion rebellions of locals and governors uh, rebellion of locals and governors means rebellion means vidroho vidroho locals and governors because the garrison because the delhi sultanate was living in delhi so it was very difficult for uh, them to maintain the garrison towns of bangal and sindh how first problem is rebellion of local and governor because they were living in delhi so they give the responsibility to the local governors that you have to maintain all the things okay but sometimes they rebel rebel means vidroh karna sometimes they do not uh, they did not do their work honestly so it it was creating so a very big problem for the uh, for the delhi sultanate because they were not doing their work honestly so it was a very big problem for the uh, for the delhi sultanate that that uh, delhi sultanate thinks that thought that we have to expand the empire from garrison town to big empire we have to expand our empire okay second problem was war when war was happened then it was very difficult to maintain the it was very difficult to fight from the delhi uh, delhi to the bengal and sindh so it was creating many problem third was bad weather condition bad weather condition which disturb communication see bad weather condition which disturb communication means it was very necessary it was very essential to maintain the communication with the garrison town of bengal and garrison town of sin if they want to um, want to move the things smoothly so but when the when the weather condition is worse uh, for example earthquake for example flood so it was very difficult to maintain the communication system with the other garrison town so this was also reason why delhi sultanate was thinking to expand their empire okay uh, next is mongol invasion from Afghanistan Mongol invasion from Afghanistan there was a invasion uh, there was a uh, tribe who came from China then at that time uh, the delhi sultanate was very afraid because they thinks that if they will expand the empire it was very easy to fight with uh, fight against this mongol invasion okay so this was the also this was also a reason when uh, why delhi sultanate was thinking to expand the empire now we'll see consolidation of sultans sultanas was very essential see 